Time now for our rants and raves of the week. Starting with Adam. All right, I want to rant real quickly for Chuck Todd, or against oh, yeah. Chuck Todd and Meet the Press, who dealt with the uh, racially motivated killings in Charleston on their show last week, and then followed up with this segment about people who had actually pulled the trigger, describing what they would say to their 12-year-old selves about the, the you know fatal violence they'd inflicted. And all the men featured in this segment were African American. So you had a show that began talking about nine African Americans being killed in the, a, a church in Charleston by a white supremacist, and then segued into this totally tone deaf, inappropriate piece on black men who had killed. Um, Other black men. And it was, yeah, yeah, yeah well, we actually, it's not, oh. I'm not 100% clear on that, but all the people who had killed I were see. black. Um, they got negative feedback in real time. Chuck Todd retracted the introduction to the piece because people were so offended. But it was just stupid. Mm -hmm. It was just and a really, hello, really Once again, video. editorial? Hello? Yeah. Why did they say they, 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 well, they made it beforehand. No. They made it beforehand and then decided to go ahead and yeah, write it anyway said, because they, they thought they, they were being brave or something. I, no yeah, words. They thought they were being brave. Yeah. No yeah. words. <laughs> really. <laughs> All right, Dan. It was a lot worse than stupid. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I agree with Charlie Pierce, who wrote in his blog for Esquire that people ought to be fired over this. Anyway, I have a rant for the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, which does not like the tough coverage that the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette uh, has been giving them on issues such as uh, health care reimbursement, uh, some regulatory issues, uh, even some problems they've run into with organ transplants. So the Medical Center has responded by banning the uh, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette from all of its facilities. What? And I don't mean reporters, <laughs> I mean the paper. Oh, that's uh, funny. You can't, you can't, can't they, buy it. they can't distribute the paper any, there anymore for free. Can't bring it in in your free. lunch pail. Uh, they don't sell it. I, I don't know whether it's considered contraband or yeah. not, but uh, but just, hmm. you know, just Those a, a horrendous. Those kinds of things are ridiculous and extreme. It, it, it calls, never works, It calls never. all kinds of negative attention yeah, to themselves. Exactly. Hmm. All right, who's up? Vera. Uh, so my rave is for two obscure bloggers. I don't even know if this is their real <laughs> names, but uh, Emma Quangle and Henry Crinkle. And <laughs> I don't think so. I'm guess no, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They were the ones that, that uh, discovered the uh, terrible, hateful manifesto of, huh. d of Dylan Roof online. And they did it by um, doing a reverse domain huh. search. Uh, hmm. So they paid $49 and looked up to see if he'd ever registered a website. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of investigative journalists in this country that I wish they had thought of that. Yeah, that wish they had thought wow. of that. And these guys, uh, and, and they still seem to be kind of anonymous, even though the Washington Post did a, did a, a pretty cool story on them. Mm. Uh, but, but yes, it's, it's sort of, here we are crowdsour crowdsourcing the truth. So and now uh, people can no longer say, we'll have no idea what motivated him to kill. Right. We know. Right. Yeah. No, it was a great contribution, yeah. Yeah. And, and they deserve yeah. credit. That's good. Right. For $49. Yeah. Yep. Kelly. All right. Well, speaking of the Washington Post, maybe these two people now will be in their Washington Post talent network. I'm raving for this. Um, this was a creation of Ann Kornblut. People may know her work. She's a very good journalist. And when she went off to do her fellowship at the John <coughs> Knight uh, Fellowship uh, in Stanford, she came up with this innovative way of trying to across all of the systems at the Washington Post have really good freelance talent, um, which may range from bloggers that do mm -hmm. this to other really fine reporters that just are not in-house to maybe just a one-off person that just happens to be in a particular area who knows something about it. The contribution is that instead of them all over the newsroom, I'll pick you and maybe I know you and maybe I know you. Now it's all in a comprehensive way, which is the way newsrooms ought to be operating anyway. And as you know, the Post is one of those print organizations that's been very forward thinking and bringing in uh, digital and being on that trend. So kudos for them. Uh, kudos for figuring out another way to make journalism more efficient and, um, uh, and responsive to community needs. Well, I have a rave tonight and I'm sure you're all gonna join with me in this, and that is for Jack Williams, who signed mm. off WBZ mm. last night after 40 years on the air. I came to Boston in 1979 and was back and forth a little bit, but uh, Jack has been there the entire time. Uh, he's, he's a great writer, he's funny, he's personable. He did that wonderful Wednesday's Child feature since I think 1981. I saw some of the kids uh, this week who have, are all grown up, grown 
adults at this point and they credit him with you know mm. getting their life back on track and he's just a wonderful guy his wife Marcy and they're just looking forward to having a good time that's he's still true. young. Well, 40 wow. years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, I, I saw some of his last newscast yesterday. It was terrific. And Liz Walker and Bob oh, Bell Bobble showing up. Yeah. Yeah. That was terrific. Yeah. All right, that is it for our show. Tell us what you think. Email us, tweet us, or leave a comment. We're always on at beatthepress.org.